In September 1940, Vitold Pilecki allowed himself to be captured during a roundup and transport to the Kale Auschwitz concentration camp. He spent more than two and a half years there, building a conspiratorial network and preparing reports for underground movements on the situation in the camp and the extermination of Jews. In 1943, Pilecki did the seemingly impossible and escaped from the camp with two of his fellow prisoners. The so-called Pilecki reports, also known as Vitold's reports, are among the world's first testimonies on the nightmare of the Holocaust along with the reports of Jan Karski. Witold Pilecki fought as a cavalry officer in the Battle of Warsaw during the Polish-Soviet War. After the war, he and his family took over the Sokurcha estate, where he became known for his efforts as a social activist. He had two children, enjoyed painting and writing poetry. He established the first local agricultural association and dairy cooperative, which helped farmers to withstand the required low prices of food. This carefree period ended with the outbreak of World War II. In September 1939, Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union invaded Poland and began the bloodiest war in human history. Despite fierce battles, the Polish army was defeated in October 1939 and the country was divided between two occupying powers, Germany in the West and the Soviets in the East. Witold Pilecki was one of the founders of the secret Polish army, a conspiratorial organization whose aims were to restore independence and prepare ranks for future military formations. During this time, the Germans established the Kale Auschwitz death camp. No one really knew what was going on behind the camp's barbed wire fence. After two members of the secret Polish army were imprisoned there, the decision was taken to investigate on site. Pilecki was offered a risky mission to infiltrate the camp. He agreed. On 19 September 1940, Witold Pilecki allowed himself to be captured as the Germans were rounding up prisoners in the Zelibosz district of Warsaw. Two days later, Pilecki arrived at Auschwitz on a transport carrying a total of 1,705 prisoners. He was given prisoner number 4859, and he gave the Germans a false identity. They were convinced that his name was Tomasz Serafinski. Even the journey to the camp was torture. The carriage doors were sealed shut, and the prisoners were crammed in as tightly as physically possible. They were given nothing to eat or drink for the whole journey. After arriving at the camp, they were lined up, beaten, kicked, had dogs set on them, and were hounded to march on, under the constant shouts of the Germans. Pilecki lost two teeth on that day. He miraculously avoided death on several occasions during his imprisonment in Auschwitz. Despite the danger, he was prepared to pay any price to fulfill the mission he had been given and continue his conspiratorial activities. He secretly sent two letters to his family in which he asked them not to try and have him released. He lied to them that the conditions in the camp were good. Kielecki created a network of camp conspirators, the Military Organization Union, based on a cell system of groups of five. For the safety of its members, groups were formed independently of one another, and none of them had any knowledge of the existence of another. The members' tasks were to offer moral support to their fellow prisoners, gather intelligence on the situation in the camp and transfer it outside, organize food and clothing, and finally prepare to rise up against the Germans. In March 1942, the military organization union comprised around 500 people, and its numbers significantly increased in the following year. Pilecki ordered the collection of information on the scale of genocide. The reports sent via Warsaw were intended to appraise London of the situation and were transferred by free or escaped camp allies whom Pilecki had specially prepared as liaison officers. The reports, passed on by word of mouth or written on tissue paper, detailed life in the camp, the treatment of prisoners, their labor, and the punishments that were applied. In his messages, Pilecki consistently put pressure on the Home Army Command Polish underground armed forces to take steps to liberate the prisoners. He never received an answer to his request, and so he decided to report to Warsaw in person. On the night of April 26, 1943, 
Uletsky did the seemingly impossible. He escaped from the Auschwitz camp along with two of his fellow prisoners, Edvard Cheselsky and Jan Redze. Once again free, Uletsky wrote the first report from Auschwitz. His account was given to the Home Army Command and translated into English, German, and French. In autumn 1943, Pilecki wrote a second, more exhaustive account which he titled Report W. After nearly five years of German occupation and terror, the residents of Warsaw stood up to fight for their freedom. The Warsaw Uprising began. Pilecki took an active part in the fighting. The insurgents fought hard for 63 days, with no help from the outside world, but victory in the city ultimately went to their ruthless enemy. Witold was arrested by the Germans. For Poland, the end of the war meant the start of a new chapter under another totalitarian regime, this time led by the communists. In December 1945, Pilecki returned to Soviet-occupied Poland under a false name, where he immediately began to work for independence movements. He was arrested in 1947 by the Soviet-controlled security office, subject to brutal torture and interrogations, and sentenced to death in a political show trial. The sentence was carried out on the 25th of May, 1948, and Pilecki was executed with a shot to the back of the head in a Warsaw prison. Like thousands of others who fought for liberation from the Soviets, he was brutally murdered and thrown into an anonymous mass grave. He was succeeded by his wife and two children. Witold Pilecki's final resting place is still being sought to this very day. Memory of Witold Pilecki was outlawed for many years, and it was only after the fall of communism in 1989 that history was returned to its rightful place. In free and independent Poland, Pilecki was restored and promoted to the rank of colonel, and his incredible story is slowly becoming more and more known around the world. <laughs>